Hey everyone, I'm Adam Kelly. In this video, I want to show you some improvements I've made to this project with the coin collector. So if you haven't watched the previous videos, then you might want to go back and watch those because I sort of explain how to make a single coin collector. And now we're looking at a multi coin collector. But not only that, there's a difficulty added to this that is this green block. So this green block, once I get it to play, it takes a second. Okay, so let me pause it. I set this up so that the green block now is in the way of the door. The cactus character can't even get into this area without pushing this green block out of the way. And then it has to collect these red coins to get points. And then to complete the episode, it has to touch this golden sun up at the top. And so let me just play this and show you what it looks like. So it pushes that out of the way, and then it uses it as a platform to jump to the higher level, and then it gets that sun. So this is a particularly difficult challenge and something where if you just took the code that we used from the previous tutorial and tried to make this challenge work, well, first of all, you would need to adapt it so that collecting multiple coins worked properly and so that touching the sun was the thing that ended the episode but that's not a that's not terribly difficult to do all you have to do is just make sure that they reset themselves each episode and that instead of the coin being the thing that ends the episode it's this so that i want i thought about making a tutorial for that but that really wasn't worth um worth the time i wanted to combine it because this includes something called curriculum now, what curriculum does is it allows you to gradually ramp up the difficulty so that the agent can learn on a simpler task. And so basically what I did was I started it out so that when it first starts learning, it does spawn right here. The character still spawns there, but the green block is just here. It's just set right here so that it doesn't need to learn how to push the block and jump on the block to get up there. It just needs to learn to go up this ramp and jump across and then go up to the top, which it turns out isn't too difficult of a challenge. It was able to get that pretty easily. But the challenge of getting the block pushed all the way here, when I let it train, I think I let it train, I definitely let it train overnight, but maybe for, I don't know, uh, 15 hours or more, it never learned anything beyond pushing the block into this space and collecting these first few coins right here. It never managed to get up to this top level. Now there is a caveat that I do want to say. My character controller, I learned that it had a little bit of an exploit that it could do where if I had the jump turned up too strong, let me just uh, let me stop this for a second and just show that. So the character itself has this uh, jump speed, and I had that too strong, and it was able to cheat and find a way to use this ramp to like launch itself up to the top layer. So that's the sort of thing that happens in reinforcement learning. If there is an exploit to be found, then your agent may find that exploit and cheat its way up to the top in this case. Um, so you do need to not only test it yourself to make sure, for example, this green block here, we want to make sure that the uh, the agent can't get over without the block, but also you may need to train it and then find out that there's some exploit that it's taking advantage of that even you as a player aren't able to do or weren't able to think of. So there's all sorts of interesting stuff, but I just wanted to sort of talk about that. So anyway, the the curriculum itself basically just starts out with it being here. And then it makes it gradually further away so that this agent needs to push this block. And let me just show you in, I'm going to disable these really quick. And then I'm going to make the character be in heuristic mode temporarily so that I can play the game and show you uh, what it looks like from the player's or from the agent's point of view. So this is what the agent sees as it goes, and it needs to push it through. Now you'll notice that I've locked this so that you can't push it this way. That's kind of an important thing. Uh, when I set it up so that you could push the block in any direction and it could rotate and all that, 
it just made it more difficult of a problem that I it was I didn't even want to take on that challenge. Um, I'm sure it, it would have worked eventually, but I just for this tutorial wanted to get it working at all. And so I will mention that in order to get to accomplish that, if you're trying to make a sliding block, you can just use the rigid body constraints to freeze the position in certain axes. So it can't move in the X direction or the Y direction, and it can't rotate at all. So just wanted to mention that. Otherwise, it's just a rigid body with a box collider on it that can slide back and forth. So it is possible to actually slide this out of here and then it's completely useless um, unless you slide it back in. So there were all sorts of interesting things that happened. But aside from that, I did want to show how you accomplish this curriculum, which is probably what you're most interested in this video. There is a companion tutorial for this where I'm going to post this code. So check the link in the description. But basically, the collector code, I called it advanced collector in this case, is, or the uh, config is exactly the same. If I switch between simple collector and advanced collector, nothing has changed between these two. Although I guess I did add curiosity. Um, I don't know that this was helping that much, but curiosity does sometimes make uh, the agents eventually figure out more difficult puzzles. So that's something I've talked about in previous videos, but I don't fully understand what makes Curiosity work so much better or not. So maybe there's something else that you can search for online that gives a little more description. But the, the thing that is mainly different here is this environment parameters. And so the curriculum here is set up in these chunks of JSON. And you have a lesson or several lessons in a row that then have these criteria for them. And we'll talk about these really quick. So the measure is set to reward. Um, there, the alternative to this is progress. And progress is like how long it stays alive in step count. So uh, you can see like, if you're trying to make your agent stay alive, for example, then you would use progress. But in my case, I'm trying to get it to get a certain number of points, which it gets by collecting coins. And so I wanted the threshold to be over 1.5, which if we look at my code really quick, the agent gets some points for collecting coins. It gets one divided by the total number of coins added each time. So if there's six, then it's going to get one sixth of a point each time it collects a coin. And then it gets one full point when it touches that sun at the top of the castle. So I wanted to get to get past 1.5 before I made it any more difficult. So the first, so that's what this first section essentially means. Um, the min lesson length means if it accidentally gets 1.5 as some fluke, don't let it uh, advance to the next round until at least 100 lessons have passed. But then there's this value section here, and this is a basically a random sampler. And so it's going to take anything between the min and max value here, choose a random number, and apply that. So this min value of 0 and max value of 1, in this case, means this thing, the way I've set it up, and I'll show you how it's set up, is either going to be here or a maximum of like one meter in this direction. Okay, so it may have to push the block a little bit, but it's still possible to get up to the top from here. So this first lesson, no matter what, it can use this green block without having to push it to get up to the top level. So that is lesson one. Lesson two, I basically just make it a little more difficult once it gets past the threshold of 1.8, uh, or sorry, that's the threshold that it gets to the next le lesson. But zero to two is, so zero to two meters, so we're looking at like, not just here, but here. And then the next lesson is 0.5 to three, and then finally two to five. So two to five means it's gonna start here and then here, 
So it's finally getting it there. And then the last lesson is actually five. So it always starts here. So I think you get the idea of what's happening here. There's lots of different ways you can do curriculum. It doesn't have to be position. It doesn't have to be anything. You can just make it like if curriculum equals two, then you completely change up the puzzle. Um, the way that you read in these values and what you do with them is completely up to you. Basically, the way it works is you can access the current value. So for this one, what I did was I created, okay, let me try and make this bigger. I created a castle area to control the castle itself. So the castle area manages like the sun and, or it, uh, I think it's aware of the sun. Uh, it's definitely aware of the coins and the block. And it's, its main job is basically to keep track of the coins and reset them, keep track of the block and reset that. So yeah, here it is. So I have a list of collectibles. That's those coins. I have the block. And these are hooked up in the game itself. So just to show you really quick, the castle here has these coins hooked up. So seven coins. And then the moving block is hooked up. And then I have this block offset here. And what this does is it will basically set the position of the block based on that curriculum. So here's how you read in the curriculum. There's this academy object provided by ML agents, and it's a singleton, so you, you get an instance of it. And then you get environment parameters. So environment parameters corresponds to, right here, environment parameters coming from your training. So this really only shows up during training. It's able to get these environment parameters. And then you want to match up this name that you've set, block offset in my case, with the input that you do to this get with default. The idea with this get with default function is it's going to ask the trainer, hey, do you have this curriculum environment parameter? If so, I'm going to use that. If not, then I'm going to pass in a value and use that instead. So in my case, I defaulted this to five so that it says, hey, try and get the, the default training, otherwise use five. And what five is, is it's basically I'm saying, hey, move this five meters ahead of this starting position. So to try and sort of stitch all that together, this starts at a starting position. And then the academy has that information about the environment parameters that are coming from here, depending on what lesson it's on. So for lesson one, it's going to have a random value between zero and one. So that value of zero and one is going to come back when we call this function. And then we're going to multiply that by this forward vector plus the position. So we're going to get a value between 0 and 1 that's going to move this somewhere between here and here. So it might be here. You get the idea. And then the next time we call this, if we have advanced to the next lesson, then we're going to get values from a different range. So in lesson 2, we're going to get something between 0 and 2. In lesson, th or, yeah, in lesson 2, I guess that was lesson 1. It starts with lesson 0. In lesson two, it's going to be between half a meter and three meters. So that's really all there is to do with um, to get curriculum working. You can see I do it in two places here, but I basically just do it at the very beginning on awake. And then also every time we reset the area, when it resets the area, it just sets the um, each each item, each collectible to active because I set them to inactive when when it runs into them and then it resets the block position. So you can use this for all sorts of different things. In the airplane course that I taught, uh, what I did was I had it so that there were these checkpoints that the airplane would have to fly through. The curriculum would set it up so that they could get within 50 meters of the checkpoint and then it would succeed. And then I made it the bubble smaller and smaller and smaller until it learned to fly through the checkpoints instead of just flying near the checkpoints. There's also a lot of examples in the ML agents code. 
on their GitHub. So on this, I'm on the training ML agents documentation page. And in here, they talk about curriculum learning a little bit. There's a curriculum section that kind of explains a little bit more how this breaks down. And so you can look at that and you can see what each of these different things mean if you want a better description than what I gave. And wall jump, the wall jump example that they have is their main example of how to do curriculum. Wall jump is basically it has a block that it pushes up to the wall so that it can jump over it. So this is actually a very similar problem that this is solving here when we do um, the pushing the block into place. Yeah, so hopefully this is helpful. The code I'm going to post on at the link that's in the description. And just as a little preview, basically, um, I'm working on this right now. And you can see here how to set up your uh, all the code that I showed in this, how to set up the curriculum um, in your config file. And otherwise, the training is exactly the same. The only difference is now in TensorBoard, when you look at this training, um, you can see this took actually about five hours to train for me. You can see along the way that it jumped up in lesson number. You can watch that and see how, you know, how it proceeded. So it took quite a while to get from lesson one up to lesson two, but then from two to three, it was really quick. So like, from lesson one to two, that zero to two value up to 0.5 to three, that actually makes a lot of sense because if you look at this scene, if you think about the difference between zero and two, where most of, the, you know, two thirds of the time it's gonna end up in position, and then the right remaining time it just needs to nudge it a little bit, that's a much easier problem than something that starts here to here, where most of the time it has to actually push it into place. Let me know what you thought of the video. Uh, we appreciate all of you so much. Uh, I know we've been putting out a few less videos lately. It's just been kind of a busy time in our lives. So we appreciate you sticking with us. And uh, as always, good luck in your projects. And uh, we look forward to seeing you in the next video.